Army commander says follow health guidelines even though COVID-19 is eliminated in the country. Twelve weapons found during an STF raid in Pitipana. Suspicions arise of a plan to attack a prison bus. Karuna speaks again of joining the government after the election. UNP rejects the complaints made in the MCC Review Committee report. The government challenged to present their stance on the MCC. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandro Ferdinando. Let's start off with a look at your local news. In a backdrop where the COVID-19 pandemic has been contained in Sri Lanka, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva spoke to news first. What is the plan of the... Uh, so as of now it is the plan, but however you see that uh, uh, from yesterday, a uh, lot of COVID cases were reported. Even United States of America, you found that uh, highest number of COVID patients were reported yesterday. Although initially a decision was taken to open on the first, mm. uh, will be con now once again they will reconsider with the situation outside other countries, uh, world around the world, what's happening with those situations. Uh, I think the government will rethink uh, and uh, go for a solid uh, date and uh, uh, plans are already in place, but only the date will be decided by the government in time to come. Yudha mudha pratthamadi. Mevena vita mona akareda ape Sri Lanka ave corona mardana vedasadhana kriya pavati ni. After the 30th of April, we have not found a single COVID-19 patient in the community. The only patients we identify now are those who return to Sri Lanka from overseas. Now from last night, the government also decided to lift the curfew imposed during night time. At a time like this, we must pay our respects to the people and it is their actions that allow us to maintain the current situation. So the people now have in their hands the situation moving forward. So we ask that they follow the health regulations. We have told them as much as possible to wear masks in public. We even educated people on good health practices and to contribute to the current state and that we must do this moving forward. If we go forward like this, we can eradicate COVID from the country. We have dealt with the first wave very well. We don't expect to face the situation, but we had the confidence and the capacity to deal with the challenge. Hmm. The President appointed a task force headed by the Defence Secretary, Major General Kamal Gunratna. We are also in it as members. I think these are things that can be dealt with in a day or two, but we will put together the plans and carry them out in a way that will benefit the country and the society. I believe this team can fulfil the aspirations of the President. Yes, definitely. The tri forces, the STF, narcotics, all of them will work together. In anything concerning the security and well being of the public, the army and the police are used. And I think that is what they are doing. Meanwhile, a stock of weapons suspected to be stored in a location to have launched an attack on a prison bus was discovered in Pitipana, Homagama. The weapons were discovered following a raid carried out by the police special task force. The weapons were discovered at an electric store along the Murugahena Road in Pitipana, Homagama. Police special task force personnel discovered 12 firearms that consist of 11 T-56 assault rifles and one T-86 assault rifle. Many high security establishments such as the Sri Lanka Army Temple, security forces headquarters in the western province, the military settlement and the army hospital are located near the location in which the raid was carried out. The information has surfaced that the stock of firearms belongs to a person named Gaganer, who is identified as a close associate of the incarcerated underworld gang leader Koskuda Tharka. In line with this discovery, the police STF said that a person named Porta Kapila 
has been given the vehicle that was used to rob the jewelry shop in the Mathura town. This vehicle was found a few months back in a house located near the store in which the stock of weapons was found. Because the vehicle was registered under a pregnant woman, the spouse of the woman was arrested for the possession of the vehicle. It has been revealed that the person arrested today under the name Porta Kapila was the same person who was arrested for the possession of the vehicle that was used to rob the jewelry store in Mathura. Kosgoda Tarika was identified as the chief suspect of the Mathura jewelry shop robbery, where a police officer had to sacrifice his life in a crossfire with the robbers. The suspects in the case have been hiding for four months in a house owned by Kapila Kumara, who was arrested today. Organized crime ringleader Kosgoda Tarika has been imprisoned in the Busa prison and several mobile phones were discovered in his cell on the 10th of this month. This is not the first time where the latest weaponry belonging to this organized crime gang was discovered. A mini Uzi automatic firearm has been discovered earlier. Meanwhile, the owner of the electric equipment distributing store where the stock of weaponry was discovered was arrested this evening. A number of views have been expressed on the controversial remarks made by Vinigamurti Mulitharan, alias Karuna Amman. Opinions were also expressed on the alleged supplying of weapons to the LTT in the past. Former Minister Gamini Javikrama Pereira expressed these views in Katugampola. Vadda Raja Perumal makes a statement and the Prime Minister Mahinda Raja Paksa also said something about the late President Premadasa giving weapons to the LTTE. Now I will reveal it. When I established provincial councils with an Indian agreement, there was also an agreement that Prabhakaran would come to the democratic path. We took these steps with the Indian government. They went on the offensive as well. As presidential candidate, late Mr. Premadasa said that the Indian army should leave. Then after his victory, he gave a date for the Indian forces to leave. If that was not the case, they would have continued to be here. It was a worse situation with Prabhakaran. At that time, we told Vardaraja Perumal to come forward, along with a few ministers, and that I too will help. The Indian army told him, however, to create his army. They told him to create a northeastern flag instead of the Sri Lankan flag. There was opposition to the constitutional change. The Indian army was behind it. At the time, President Premadasa was not going to put our army up against this because of the agreement in place and because it was banned. It was an agreement by J.R. Jayawadana. I say with responsibility that at the time, Prabhakaran was in discussions with President Premadasa through a third party to enter a peace agreement. Karikalan was there at the time but died later. At the time we were speaking to Vardaraja Peruma. If Premadasa gave weapons, it was to the Indian army to defeat them and that was what happened to Vardaraja Peruma's army. The Indian army then had to leave. It was after that that they took these weapons and did those deeds. They took the weapons and killed 600 officers at the Batiklo station. They killed many more. It was in this backdrop that we gave weapons and also sent the Indian army home. <laughs> Vinayagamurti Muralidharan, also known as Karuna Aman, expressed the following views in Batiklo. Thirty <laughs> During the last election, they went to Kuala Lumpur and brought down Padmanathan. It was the drama before the presidential election. What happened to KP? Nothing visible. Now KP is free. Nobody knows what happened to items confiscated by the state either. There are no documents. If they vested it with the state, it should be there. They must be given the gold to the central bank. There should also be some documents. We have not seen a thing. They played that drama well. They talk of Hezbollah, but he is in Batiklo. So is Karuna. They are contesting through various teams to split the minority vote. It is a trick to retain the power of the government. <laughs> Karuna Amman's statement is wrong. 
Any soldier, legal member of the military, former terrorist or one that has been rehabilitated, they have no right to boast about the number of people that they have killed. Whoever does it, it is wrong. The law must be enacted against them. <laughs> Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha made a statement yesterday. What we see is that the primary objective of it was to justify the release of Karuna Aman. He is also a candidate and he made a political speech. It wasn't an address on policy or plans. If one accuses him of violating election laws by making speeches of this nature, he is right. What did he do during his address? He tried to whitewash Karuna Aman for five minutes. The political problems faced by his party are not national issues. This is nothing else but an episode or two of the electric chair. Now it has been difficult to find out who committed murders in the war. The murderer says he did it. The law should then be enacted against them. They shouldn't just bring him to the CID. They shouldn't just bring him to the CID, question him and then send him home. We ask Gotabe Rajapaksa, although you are not versed in the law, does this sit right with your conscience? The Honourable Prime Minister's latest role is whitewashing Karuna. I heard that Karuna, the former terrorist, has stated that anyone can utter anything during election campaigning and that the Election Commission has granted approval. No one has given such approval. I would like to remember Karuna's recent statement. He said that he is more dangerous than COVID-19 and has killed 3,000 Sri Lankan soldiers in one night. I didn't amend anything regarding his statement. Once Karuna confessed that Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa told him that not to worry about contesting the election, but he will be given a seat from the SLPP national list. With much gusto, he says that he killed 3,000 of our war heroes. And on the other hand, without any fear, he says about Mahinda Rajapaksa's proposal to give a seat from the national list. So through his latest statement, Karuna says that Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa whitewashed him and helped him. Karuna also says that he will engage in various projects along with Mahinda Rajapaksa after the election. The truth is out and it is crystal clear that Karuna who was made a deputy chairman of the SLFP and a deputy minister by Mahinda Rajapaksa are working together. I would like to ask the 6.9 million people who voted for the Pohot tour, do you all approve Karuna Amman working together with Mahinda Rajapaksa? It's now time for a quick commercial break, but we'll be back with more news right after. London A-level students, complete your Edith Cowan University degree in two years in Sri Lanka and transfer for your master's to the top 100 universities in the world. ECU is ranked ninth in the world for quality education and first in Australia for starting salaries, with notable alumni such as Hugh Jackman, Dominic Parcell and Jai Courtney. The appointed to review the MCC handed over their report to the Secretary to the Cabinet of Ministers today. Architect Nalika Jayavira, who was a member of this committee, spoke to News First today. What is the main point in your report? The key point is we are not recommending the present compact on the same format to be signed we cannot accept. Then the second point is even the projects that has been identified cannot be approved. The third one is the implementation strategy that has been proposed cannot be accepted. So what we are technically saying is the, all these three pillars are included in the MCC compact and we are not recommending to sign this compact as it is given in format. A main factor that has been spoken on the political arena is yes, this MCC is bad. If it's an amended version, it's okay. You are also saying something similar. Yes, it's like this. We are not against any country or any agency or any person. What our assignment was to just to look at the thing in technically. Hmm. Now we have looked at the thing in technically. 
Now we have found technical defects that is contradicting the Sri Lankan law, Sri Lankan system. So if those things are to be changed, so then the exactly that agreement is not going to be there and next day. The land is one of the key factors. Right. If you consider that MCC as an enemy, your position is right. For us, MCC or US or China or India or any other country is not any, any enemy. Mm. What we are saying is, under this compact, these terms and conditions and the selection of project is wrong. Right. So if you are going to change it, that will never be the same compact in next day. A key point that came out in the past week was that the former government uh, had taken some money valuing to about 10 million US dollars. What is that story? Mm. What he has said is, in 2017, the government has signed an agreement and two th uh, 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 for 7.4 million US dollars and it has been increased to 10 million dollars by adding another 2.6 million US dollars in 2018. Mm. What we have said is, in terms of both these agreements, we don't have have any accounts details. Right. That's all we have said. Hmm. There's a cabinet approval in 2017 to sign to have the 7.4 million US dollars. And then, if you go parallelly with the US congressional notification by the MCC, you will find uh, one uh, for 7.4 million and another two congressional notifications for 2.6 million. So, technically speaking. In uh, all these three congressional notifications, it says mm. in addition to. Right. So that means this is not immediately part of the uh, 480. You are saying that the 480 has not been touched. But in addition to the 480, someone has given some money or we do not know whether the money came. And the committee as of now does not know the accounts as to what happened to this 10 million. The what we have mentioned and reported is there are two agreements only. We don't have accounts. We don't know whether we have received it. We don't know how much they have, if, if we have received it, how much they have spent it. The people are being represented in the parliament. Now, from according to the report, the supremacy of the parliament has also been challenged. How do you say that it has happened that way? Chaturanga, in uh, the compact uh, clause number 5.4, 6.2 uh, it clearly says that uh, the when the, in, the the conditions or the clauses of the compact can be changed by signing both parties without um, uh, change that's what they say they never refer the parliament approval but if you can read the PIA that is not in public domain now as at now uh, it says the 5.4 clause it clearly says within brackets including parliament that no one can interfere into the change of clauses, uh, including the parliament. Now the issue here is, the supremacy of parliament, whether it is technically there in the agreement is a question. When it comes to a parliament and adopted as an enactment of par act of parliament and give the authority to change it outside the parliament is a huge question. So that is what we have raised. Mr. Javira, the $480 million that is being given through the MCC compact to Sri Lanka, do we get it in parts? Do we get it in, uh, in, in installments? How does the 480 come? It is not coming on day one. It will be on installment basis and spans up to six years. So if someone thinks next day that you get 400 million, it's completely a false assumption. Who puts the final signature? How does he? How do? How does one decide? Okay, now this agreement is complete. We have now completed this. Who puts the final signature? Uh, Chaturanga, this is a inside information. Whether I should say or not, let me say. It's like this. This originally has been has been drafted to sign by the uh, Minister of Finance, then Minister of Finance Mangal Sam, Honorable Mangal Samavida. But uh, we found certain information saying that this, this should because it is going to the uh, area of national agreement the foreign minister's signature also should be there and approval should be there that's that's a different story it has never come to the public and uh, i will keep myself so subject to that if the foreign minister signs it, it technically it is starting point what we think yeah. but in this particular agreement it says after signing it it should go to the parliament now, if the, when it comes under the parliament, if the parliament approves as a bill, mm. uh, the act, 
then what will happen is the there's an opinion has to be uh, done by the attorney general to the effect that this has, can be implemented without any legal implications in this country. USA and Sri Lanka have worked together. But in this particular MCC case, everyone is worried about it. Why is MCC so scary? I think, Chaturanga, I answered the question partly. It's like this. All the other projects never went, never intended or never had any clause to be enacted in act of, as act of parliament. That's number one. Because when you enact as an act of parliament, it becomes part of the law of this country. Now, USA have provided many assistance, many donations, yeah. but it has worked within the given Sri Lankan legal framework and it has been completed or successfully ended. But this is not that. This is penetrating into the Sri Lankan legal system. By the 19th Amendment, we, in, we brought in a procurement commission. Now, we are admitting that the National Procurement Commission has no role to play in this mm. whole deal and it is going to be uh, enacted. Right. So, we have a one act to say the National Procurement, mm. there is another act says uh, we do not accept the National Procurement Commission guidelines. Right. Where do we stand? In the political arena, people are asking why should there be an MCC office in Sri Lanka. Uh, in the political arena, people are questioning this because incidents have happened according to your report, according to the other Jayavira in the committee in Honduras and Madagascar, especially where situations where the MCC or the US intervention has not reduced. That same question can be applied here. Let Why me, are they still here? Let me say, Chaturang, I am not a politician, but it's like this. I am, if you are referring the Sri Lankan MCC team, that was their, say, compact development team, CDT, they were stationed in Narligaha Mandir, yeah? but as said now, they are not there. They handed over all the documents to us for, to, for us to do and they, 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 were, they, were, they are not, no more there. I am not sure whether the American embassy is having a uh, com, uh, MCC team, mm. but that is beyond committee as well as the government. American can have any amount of people saying this team and that team. That's beyond our control. Now, the, if you answer the, the, the question, yes, they can have it, but it's, it doesn't work. Because, because you are saying that there's a team, you can pay and keep and em employ people and pay the salaries, but they will never do anything because Sri Lanka, the asset now, we cannot sign the compact given format. Okay, final question. You are saying from the Sri Lankan perspective, we cannot sign the current MCC. That is what the committee report says. Will the US amend it? That, of course, up to the US to decide. But in your opinion? Uh, it's like this. Uh, this is outside my as being a committee member. If as you, citizen, Jai. Uh, citizen uh, as a citizen of this country, if US is so interested helping Sri Lanka from 2004 up to this moment, yes, they should I mean because we have never said we are against trade uh, any international agreements. What we are saying is any agreement should protect the sovereignty of this country, sovereignty of the people, and then. Proceed. So if USA is really with us, they have to uh, think twice and come with us and then do their project. Committee member Jayavira says that the current MCC cannot be signed as it is. Citizen Jayavira says if US is benevolent, they should amend it and come back with a new agreement. We will only have to wait and see what will happen in the country. This report reveals that unbeknownst to the entire country, the cabinet of ministers and even former president, Ranil Vikramasinghe's former government, has signed two agreements under the MCC. If we are to come out of these agreements, if we are to save our country, these are not matters that can be done with the powers by President Gotabe Rajapaksha. These are matters that should be done with a strong parliament. Maybe the MCC office that was located at Temple Trees was shifted to a location in Dehivala as a result of possible commitments that have been made through these agreements signed in secrecy because they think that it won't be easy for the Sri Lankan government to come out of the legal commitments of these two agreements that they have signed. That is why they have set up shop in Dehivala and are aiming to continue this. <laughs> Thank you.
Yes, as per my knowledge, it is in Dehivala. I am still looking into it. It could be a plot of land that belongs to the U.S. Embassy. I am still investigating this. As per the information I have gathered, there is an office within the U.S. Embassy as well. In addition to that, they are using another off-the-record office externally as well. We must take this problem to the next parliament. We must provide a decision to the people of this country for this general election. The United National Party has refuted the allegations leveled against the former Yahapalne government by the committee reporting on the Millennium Challenge Cooperation Agreement. Issuing a statement, the UNP said, according to media reports, Professor Lalitha Sirigunuruan's report alleges 10 million US dollars was provided by MCC to the then government following the signing of two agreements with the MCC in 2017 and 2018, adding that Gunuruan goes on to state there is no record of these finances at the Finance Ministry. The statement adds the Embassy of the United States of America to Sri Lanka and the Maldives has categorically denied the MCC released any funds to the Sri Lankan government. It adds this official denied by the US government has called into question the credibility of the report and suggests the president and the government is using official resources to slander the United National Party during an election period. The UNP said that Sri Lanka Podujana Peramuna used these same baseless accusations during the presidential election and have once again resorted to these same shameless tactics to mislead the voters. The United National Party urges the government to publicly state whether they will be signing the MCC agreement and if they are not, they must inform the public of their final decision. Even a school student can realize that this committee was appointed to justify this. Months ago, the committee said that this agreement is good in percentages. I challenged this government who told that they will burn the agreement before the presidential election to announce to the public saying that they will not sign this agreement before this election. The MCC agreement has come to the finance ministry. The finance ministry has taken steps on this, but no step was taken properly. That's why we stopped it. When something comes there, they have to research its basics. But a decision was never taken to sign it. They have considered the fundamental points of the agreement and have come to an agreement. But we never signed a document. If we had signed it, it should have been in effect today. Then there wouldn't be an agreement left for this government to sign. <laughs> Before the election, they have to say whether or not they will sign the MCC agreement. Back then, they defeated Sajid Premadasa, saying the proposed MCC agreement was not in the national interest, adding that the cabinet had approved the agreement. They are trying to fool the people by saying they will let them know later. The report is there. What is happening is clear. Before the election, Gotabe Rajapaksha must tell us what they will do and if they will sign. The report must be formally presented to the cabinet. It will happen next week. The cabinet and the government will then carry out a thorough analysis. The decision will follow and will be announced to the country. I don't know about back then, but since our government was established and elected, it has not been the case. We have not established such an office for any ministry, department or corporation. Agreements that are detrimental to the country will not be signed under Sri Lanka Podujana Peraguna led government. I express that stance without any doubt. 
This clearly states obtaining people's ideas and the majority of the parliament, a simple majority, is required. What does this mean? There is a clear danger in front of our country. This is not a problem in taking the country forward. The two-third majority is not only needed to form laws, but to get a simple majority to sign this American agreement and proceed with the actions in the MCC agreement. This is the biggest danger in front of the country. This is the danger we have in the bigger picture. And this is what Mahindra Rajpaksa is hiding. I would like to say that according to the committee appointed to review the agreement, if the two-third parliamentary majority is taken to sign this agreement, the entire country will be in danger. <laughs> The review report reveals that the MCC agreement had first been discussed in 2004 and no steps had been taken regarding the agreement from 2005 to 2015. Former President Chandrika Bandaranaika Kumarantunga expressed her views regarding this revelation from Anuradhapura today. Not 2004. We applied even before that. We then received it. There were no damaging clauses in it, like now. Mahindra Rajapaksa took it forward after that. I know that the foreign minister at the time, Mangla Samaravira, was sent to America to see if we could get some more money. They saw no wrong in the MCC agreement at the time. Now they're looking for mistakes to get votes. There were no problems during my time in 2004 when we signed. My government signed it. There is none. I thought it was good at the time. I don't know about it now. They must decide. Still in local news, the central bank data revealed that the monetary authority has printed rupees 38.21 billion today. The central bank has printed approximately rupees 274.96 billion so far this year. The central bank holdings of government securities which stood at rupees 74.74 billion as of 31st of December 2019 now stands at rupees 349.70 billion as of today. Australia mineral exploration company Titanium Sands Limited has halted trading at the Australian Stock Exchange pending an update over a proposed sand mining project on Man Island in Sri Lanka. In a letter sent to the Australian Stock Exchange today, Titanium Sands Limited requested trading to be halted with immediate effect until an announcement is issued no later than the 1st of July over a proposed sand mining project on Man Island. The request had been approved by the Stock Exchange. A news first investigation exposed a series of irregularities involving the exploration activities carried out by Titanium Sands Limited in the South Asian nation that saw the drilling of more than 3,500 holes on Mana Island since 2015. In mid-June, the company announced its intentions to enter into a mining project on the island targeting 265 metric tons of minerals that include heavy metals such as ilmenite, rutile, zircon, and garnet. According to Titanium Sands Limited, ilmenite, which is the source of titanium that is used in manufacturing aircraft, was of a high quality in the island. Let's take a look at the political arena that is heated up amidst party crisis. 2020 can you remember the fight in parliament? They attacked the police with chili powder. They threw chairs at the police. They attacked the speaker. That is how people behaved in our parliament. The person who threw chili powder poured water on the speaker's chair. Yes, we threw chili powder when the speaker used police force inside the parliament. We protected the democracy in the parliament. We carried out our responsibilities in the parliament. After four and a half years, I became third out of 225 in the parliament. Some people mark their attendance but do not speak in the parliament. There are 11 people who only spoke in one session in parliament. What have they done outside the parliament if they have not done anything inside the parliament? 
There are only 15 left in Ranil's deal gang. Six of them are contesting from the national list. The rest are striking deals to rectify their mistakes. RW made the UNP go into a deteriorating state. We face challenges, but we are not bothered by those challenges. We want to make a real difference. Some people have formed alliances thanks to the labor of the UNP and trying to do different things. The country will know where the UNP will end up after the 5th of August. We will go to Sirikota and cleanse the place. We will give the leadership to Sajid Premadasa. It is easy to leave the party, but it is difficult to come. That happened to Gamini and to the grandson of the founder of the UNP. So this is no ordinary party. No one can destroy this party. I responsibly state that the SLPP will obtain the two majority with the people's mandate. I, who engage in politics with their fathers, engage in politics with them at present. People of Gaul know where I am in terms of seniority. During this time, there are some things we have to go through like never before. That is because we are the ruling faction. If someone is trying to take the Matra district to an age-old political culture, that is not the vision of Gotabe Rajapaksha. Although they talk about a systemic change, we saw how they politicized everything in the recent past. They have given the 5,000 rupee allowance and taken 10,000 rupees. They now say that they will give jobs to the youth in villages. Around 20,000 people have been sent home during the time of the previous regime. 2020 the inter-party and intra-party turmoils are coming to light in various forms. Here is one such occasion. We needed to send one or two people to my three to get the game going. We sent one person to Chandrika. Do not ask who it is. That person is contesting with us. A person who my three trusts should be sent near him. Minister Dulip Vijayasekara got caught in this. Though Dulip was there, his heart was always with us. He informed us of everything. The person who was with Chandrika informed us that he cannot go to the village being after with her because people are scolding them. Now Maitri is contesting with us through an alliance. This was only to contest the election. There were no conditions. There have been no promises regarding positions or any other matters. We challenge anyone from the SLFP to show us if any conditions have been reached. I say this in public, do not vote for anyone who is connected to Maitri in any way. Even though these people are contesting with Maitri, they put the pictures of Gotabe and Mahinda. I have the best confession made by a person who was near him. I will reveal it at the correct time. <laughs> I don't think any of us have personal issue at all. I should be the one having a personal issue with them. I was remanded thrice. My younger brother was arrested. They attempted to remand my grandmother and summon my mother before the CID. We don't hold personal grudges. Prasanna Ranatunga is also the same, but he must be having some political issue. So I think what's best is if Maitri Palasiri Sena resolves that issue. <laughs> We can see that openly the preferential vote competitions. Initially the competition was only with me in Hambantota. But it is clear that there is competition within other groups too. There are rumours that I have received calls from a Pradesh Sabha member that my next ministerial portfolio would be for Buddha Sasana. Someone else has apparently said that I won't be getting anything. I told them not to panic because even if I was given the minister of Buddha Sasana, I will do it right. <laughs> The president himself has admitted that there is either a national or an international conspiracy going on. There are a lot of talks about ministerial positions, but we have not asked for anything. We have to understand what this conspiracy is. 
this has to be defeated. There was an international conspiracy behind the collapse of the special government that was created between Maitri Pala Sirisena and Mahindra Rajapaksa after 52 days. The same conspiracy has resurfaced in a different form again. You know, Meanwhile, several cutouts of the leader of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Maitri Pala Sirisena, were removed from Polon Narwa and Kadruvela today. Earlier, the election commission requested for these to be removed as they did not comply with the election laws. The Maubi Majanata Party pledged its support to the Samagi Janabala VK today. Leader of the Maubi Majanata Party, Hemukumar Nane Akkara, Leader of the Samagi Janabala VK, Sajit Premadasa, General Secretary Ranjit Madhub Bandara, and several members of both parties were present at the event. The National Election Commission has informed the Secretary of Defence, retired Major General Kamal Gunratna, in writing, citing that there has been no response for the request made by the Commission regarding the security of former Governor Asad Isali as of yet. The letter signed by the Chairman of the National Elections Commission, Minda Desha Priya, states that the Commission has requested the Ministry of Defence to take steps to provide adequate security for Asad Sali, a renowned party leader, a former governor and a candidate contesting from the national list in several occasions. The letter further states that the Commission has requested that adequate security to be provided to the former governor by the 26th of last month and he fails to do so to produce a report citing the reasons as to why not. The letter states, as of no response has been given, the Commission has requested the Ministry of Defence to instruct the acting IGP to take the necessary steps regarding this matter. We want a clean parliament. We want a clean government. Think before you vote. Shirantha Sanjay, a man who was to get married next month, faced an unfortunate incident along with his fiance. Shirantha's wedding was set for the 17th of July. Along with his fiance, Shirantha went to Riverston for the pre-shoot prior to their wedding. The couple's parents also joined them on their journey. They completed their photo shoot in the early hours. The locals had informed them that the Sera Allah offered a perfect backdrop to make their memories more special. Shirantha and his fiance, who also posed for a picture near the waterfall, had slipped and fallen. Following a search operation lasting many hours, Shirantha's lifeless remains were found. It was about 4 p.m. They took all the photos and were taking the last few. Suddenly, the two slipped. It was my daughter first. Shirantha tried to catch her, but they both slipped. Nobody came to help them. Then I jumped. I couldn't watch them drown. The photographer offered them a long stick and my daughter held onto it and both of them came to the surface. When the others tried to rescue them, Shirantha sank to the bottom. It was the last photo. <laughs> He went underwater. They took me out. That is all I know. I don't remember anything. We slept at the same time. Nobody got in to save him. The final rites will take place at the Kiribata in Nauyana. Meanwhile, Dumit Fernando has been appointed as the chairman of the board of directors of the Colombo Stock Exchange with effect from 1st of July 2020. Dumit Fernando is the chairman of one of the leading investment banking firms engaged in corporate finance, adversary, stockbroking, research and wealth management, which he has led for the last six years. He also serves as a member of the Economic Policy Steering Committee of the Ceylon Chamber of Commerce. Until returning to Sri Lanka in 2013, Mr. Fernando was Managing Director and Group Chief Operating Officer for Credit Suisse Asia Pacific. 
a US dollars 2.5 billion revenue business across 12 countries and a member of that firm's Global Leadership Council. Foreign media reported that gunmen have attacked the Pakistani stock exchange in the southern city of Karachi, killing at least two people and injuring others. The assailants stormed the exchange after launching a grenade attack at the main gate to the building. According to police, officers have killed all four heavily armed gunmen and are combing the area. Militants from the Baloch Liberation Army say they were behind the attack. Ethnic Baloch groups have fought a long-running insurgency for a separate homeland and a greater share of resources in Pakistan's Balochistan province. Iran has issued an arrest warrant and asked Interpol for help in detaining U.S. President Donald Trump and dozens of others it believes carried out the drone strike that killed a top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani in Baghdad. According to foreign media, Tehran prosecutor Ali al Qasimir said today that Trump and more than 30 others whom Iran accuses of involvement in the January 3rd strike that killed General Qasem Soleimani face, I quote, murder and terrorism charges, unquote. al Qasimir did not identify anyone else sought other than Trump but stressed Iran would continue to pursue his prosecution even after his presidency ends. Al Qasimir also quoted as saying that Iran requested a red notice to be put out for Trump and others, which represents the highest level arrest request issued by Interpol. The U.S. killed General Soleimani, who oversaw the Revolutionary Guards Expeditionary Quds Force, and others in January strike near Baghdad International Airport. The assassination came after months of incidents raising tensions between the two countries and ultimately saw Iran retaliate with a ballistic missile strike targeting American troops in Iraq. Sri Lankans living in Paris, France, also joined with us in singing the Nagatimu Sri Lanka song. We leave you tonight with the rendition of the Negative Sri Lanka theme song. Anduruvala pate atherin hinahi Negative Sri Lanka Piyasak sankha vadak atherin Negative Sri Lanka Sri Lanka Sri Lanka Idiriya gana ek di apasitu ot raka gana te Lanka Duruve viya sena apa idiriya eti baat ke jaya kanwa Levonu Sri Lanka Levonu Sri Lanka Sanka bade kratrin nagiti mu Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka, I've been here.
Nagitimo Sri Lanka. Nagitimo Sri Lanka.